What's up, San Jose? Y'all want to buy some cheap real estate? Some super cheap stuff? Oh, I got some cheap stuff today, boy. Oh, boy, I got some cheap stuff. We're going to talk about a really, 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 really friggin' cheap rental property y'all could buy. But we ain't just going to talk about the good. No. We're going to talk about why it's cheap, and that includes the bad. Yeah, this property ain't perfect. That's why it's friggin' cheap. I need you to know why, and then you could decide if it makes sense. Let's check it out. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here, working for my guy, Larry, investor from San Jose. Now, Larry, duplex I got for you today, much cheaper than a lot of the stuff we're going to be looking at. Much cheaper. You can get a hefty discount compared to what you normally can out here in this market. But why, brother? That is the question, and that's why you guys work with me, because I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm going to give you the info, the insight, the intel, the stuff you need to know as an investor, because... Yeah, this thing's cheap, but there's a reason why it's cheap, and that's going to affect how you make money off this investment for the rest of your ownership of it. Let's check this thing out, Larry. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there, those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's going to be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. All right, folks, let's unpack this thing, right? Why is this duplex so cheap, right? Got a little picky pick there, okay? Why is this bad boy so cheap, okay? Uh, let's, well, first we'll go over the address, I guess. 508 West 23rd, Lorraine. 44052. Price at 69 grand, right? Just hit the market four days ago. Okay? 69 grand, folks. Now, first thing I guess we need to do when we're trying to figure out why this duplex is so cheap is we need to establish a baseline, right? I know a lot of people watching the show are coming from all over the world, right? Got a lot of people from Cali, a lot of people from New York, uh, a lot of people from Texas, a lot of people from Oregon, Oregon, or I say Oregon. I'm told it's or, Oregon, like a piano. I don't know. I feel like all the people from Oregon or Oregon, I, they just cry like a lot. Like, just like so much crying in the comments about how I say Oregon. So now I'm very sensitive about it. Not not as sensitive as those skinny jean wearing sons of bitches out there in Portland, though. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the moral of the story is, folks, the audience of this show from all over the world, uh, in where most of you live, right, most of you that are out there trying to invest in these types of properties, invest with Holton Wise, you're looking for properties that are much cheaper than where you live, right? So we got to establish a baseline, right? You can't compare this to houses in Portland or houses in Cali or this or that, right? What this is, this is a suburb of the Cleveland area, right? Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, 30 minutes west. I think it's like a high C, high C grade neighborhood, okay? I like this neighborhood quite a bit. Uh, in this region, in this neighborhood, what we're seeing right now, duplexes renting uh, each unit, rents are between like 750 and 8 typically, okay? And pricing, you're over 100K and they're selling within hours of going on the market, within days, immediately. Market's hot. It's fresh. Like you see these things, you got to pounce on them. And that's like at the price point of like 100 or so, right? Around 100, okay? This one is at 69. All right, for the mathematicians out there, that's like 30 G's cheaper. Why? Why is this bad boy 30 G's cheaper? What is happening here, right? Let's take a look, see. What do we got? Okay, what's happening? Okay, this unit, by the way, this unit is uh, like dated, right? This is dated, uh, and I guess it could be rent ready, or you could put. Uh, I don't know, like 15K into it, 10K into it. I guess that'll be up to you. I'll explain why you can do either here in a moment. Like, can we put a person in there? Yes. 
Uh, is it the best looking unit I've ever seen? No, uh, but that might just be built into the cake here, baked into the cake, okay? What they have, all right, what they have currently, let's pull up the rental chart here. Uh, we have the downstairs already paying 700 And the market rent for that upstairs unit I also put at 700 right? So that's 1400 16008 comes in. Now, when I said we're going to establish a baseline, what I said is typically for these types of duplexes or duplexes in this region, what we're seeing is rents like 750 probably 800 is more accurate now, like in today in today's time, 2022. About 800 typically for a 2-1, right? Market rents, though, I'm going to put them at 7 here, right? I'm going to put that at 7, and that's why I tell you, like, you could pretty much just leave that unit how it is as opposed to redoing it because that's the whole cusp and crux of what's going on with this duplex, right? The reason this duplex is priced so cheaply is not that it's just uh, this insanely underpriced property and you're about to score this super hot secret deal. It's basically a priced appropriately because what they did is they took into account uh, some of the functional obsolescence, fun functionally obsolete, right? There's, there's something that makes us functionally obsolete. So the terminology should be functional obsolescence, fu functionally obsolescent. I don't know. Here's the ish, right? Here's the ish, y'all. This is, this is the secret. When you have traditional duplexes, okay? Uh, two furnaces, two hot water tanks, right? Two electric panels, okay? They're in the basement. Now, on side-by-sides, there's two separate basements, which is like the bee's knees, man. That's as titties as it gets, right? That's the coolest thing ever. But uh, in this region, that's like the smallest percentage of duplexes, right? It's very rare to get those. Like probably 95% or so of the duplexes available in this market are your up-downs, where it's a shared basement, right? And in this shared basement... There's common access points for both tenants to get into the basement, right? Uh, so, like, when you're in the basement and you live upstairs, you can't go from the basement, like, into the downstairs person's apartment, right? And that is the secret sauce to this whole analysis. This particular property used to be a single. Long time ago, somebody converted it into a duplex. Now it's a duplex. And your upstairs tenant cannot access the basement okay they can't access the basement at all because the only way to get down to the basement is through the downstairs units apartment right so i say functionally obsolete because like yo that's like not how it's supposed to be right that's kind of a problem is it an insurmountable problem no uh, do we manage properties like that? Yes. Is it ideal? <laughs> oh, fuck no. Uh, can you fix that? Not really. Not from a cost, uh, cost perspective point. You pretty much kind of got to deal with it, right? Which is also why I said, like, yo, you don't really need to upgrade that upstairs unit. I guess you could rent it how it is. Because you got to understand, if you buy this property, you could get it really cheap, but you're getting it cheap because you're buying, like, the redheaded stepchild on the street, right? Also, my ginger's out there. I hope you don't get offended by that. That's just, you know, that's just that's just a saying, right? That's what people say. I mean, also, it's funny. It's, it's actually really funny. So, like, if you're not willing to laugh at that, you soulless gingers, you should really, really address yourself. Anyway, wow, that got offensive. By the way, I have red-haired people in my family. It's okay. But here's the deal. I don't think this would be a bad investment, but I don't want you to think, oh, dude, I'm getting a 30K discount. I could resell it for 100. It's always going to be less than like your regular duplexes are selling because of that issue. And, you know, you're never going to like get like a super ideal tenant who's like looking for like the best case scenario, right? Because that's why I guess you could just leave the upstairs like that because you're always going to be renting it for lower than what other apartments are. And it's always going to be a little funky, right? So, like, this is a property that, like, yeah, we'll probably end up with like people moving in and out. Uh, maybe a little more frequently uh, than like others, right? So that's why you're getting the 30K discount, right? So they baked it into the cake, right? It, it's not a perfect rental. It's always going to be kind of like eh, a little wonky, right? You're getting a wonky house. Uh, if you run the numbers, the numbers look amazing, right? Normal uh, fixed and variable expense estimates, right? I anticipate 
you know, an average of 81.24 coming in for the year. And then, uh, believe it or not, even though I just, like, tore it apart for a good, like, 10 minutes, you still probably got to pay above list, though. But not much. I think it probably you could take it down at 75, which is still, like, 25 less than normal, right? There's going to be a bunch of, like, dude, this is real estate investing. People look at the cheap stuff. There's going to be a bunch of cheap asses out there. Like, no, oh, I got to take this down. So if you really want to take it down. You probably got to pay 75, but you only put down 18,750. Bank kicks in the other 56, and I project your cash on cash at 28.2%. But truth be told, uh, when factoring in things like your vacancy and non payment, your capex, your repairs and maintenance, you know, I'm just using uh, the same like percentages uh, that I would normally use for like a normal duplex, okay? Uh, and I do that when I do a normal up-down duplex. I do it when I do a normal side-by-side -side duplex, right? So let's say the normal up-down duplex is in the middle. And I, you know, I give you guys the caveat. Like when I do a normal up-down duplex, I'm like, this should probably be what it averages out to. But if you buy a side-by-side, -side, I'm like, you probably, you might overperform here. I think your tenants will stay longer, possibly pay more rent. You get best tenants, right? Better tenants, okay? So with this one, you got to go the other way. It's double-edged sword. But this one, like, you know. This would be the normal, but, like, you got a below normal product here, right? So I think you're probably going to be dealing with a little bit lower rents, which is why I back those things back down to seven. And it's possible, you know, you're dealing with more hassles, more troubles, uh, more tenant issues than if you bought a regular one. So the question for you is, are you down to pick up a duplex for 75 k and deal with that, uh, or... Do you want to just get a traditional one for like a hundred? It's it's kind of up to you. I don't think it's a bad deal. I just want to make sure you have uh, a complete understanding of why this is so cheap, right? Buying super cheap stuff is awesome, but you need to know why it's cheap. And I think I did my job by explaining that. So now I'm going to leave it up to you. You tell me if you want to put a bid, and you tell me what that bid's going to be. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.